Hello everyone, welcome back to those who already know me and welcome, welcome, welcome to my new friends. Today is Fashion Friday and I'm going to share with you about uh, what students are really wearing. Today I'm participating actually in the photo shoot of graduation of students in Oxford in New College. Come and join me, let's go. Originally, New College was called the College of St. Mary of Winchester in Oxford and was founded by William of Wycombe in 1379. It has been completed in 1386 and it became known as New College to distinguish it from the older existing College of the House of the Blessed Mary in 1324, now known as Oriel College. Its striking architecture has made the college a popular location for film and television, featuring in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Mamma Mia 2, Here We Go Again, and His Dark Materials, among others. The college is one of the main choral foundations of the University of Oxford. The College Choir is regarded as one of the leading choirs of the world and has recorded over 100 albums. It has been awarded two gramophone awards. Like many of Oxford colleges, New College admitted its first mixed-sex cohort in 1979 after six centuries as an institution for men only. The original entrance was in New College Lane. This gatehouse carries the statues of the founder together with the Virgin Mary, to whom the college is dedicated, and the Archangel Gabriel. Above are the warden's lodgings, still today in their original position. Chapel, hall, monument tower, library, the range of tutors and students to live and work in, all built around a quadrangle. This was the first time a college had been set in this way, and it became a model for colleges in the future and around the world. The cloisters adds a special beauty, they are famous now for Home O, which featured in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Quadrangle. By the 19th century, the college was expanding again, and a major program of development by two architects, George Gilbert Scott and Basil Champneys, created a large set of buildings along Hollywell Street. They are dominated by Champneys Robinson Tower, named after a great 19th century bursar, which now is the main entrance to the college housing the Porter's Lodge. city walls. When King Richard II granted the land to build new college on 30th June 1379, he made it a condition that the college keep the city walls in good repair. 
The Lord Mayor of Oxford has been inspecting the city walls every three years since then. City walls in New College are Grade 1 listed, which means that the property is of the exceptional interest. Thank you, waiting. <laughs> Thank you. The chapel, the founder's crosiers, is displayed in a case, a masterpiece of medieval silver gilt, enamel and jewels. Jacob Epstein's moving statue of Lazarus stands in the anti-chapel. The dining hall looks magnificent. Its Tudor paneling was given by old Archbishop Warham in the early 18th century. The medieval kitchen beneath it is the oldest and tallest in Oxford or Cambridge. I'm graduating today. Yes, um, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what is your normal daily style? Um, it's pretty casual. I usually wear like jeans and a t-shirt and trainers. Yeah. Much more comfortable than this. Yeah. What brands do you prefer to wear? Um, I really like, I, I shop a lot at Urban Outfitters. Um, yeah, that's what I And um, what shoes are you wearing today? Um, I'm wearing some heel boots. I got them a long time ago, so I can't remember where they're from. But. And I see uh, pearls uh, as yes. earrings. My mom got me them. Yeah, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> yeah so um, it's a happy day and you look fabulous. Thank you. So I, I'm wishing you all the best for your future and um, have a fantastic uh, life. Thank you so much. This red wrapper no, is one of the I'm not sure the brand. And the red wrapper is the girls I've worn for many years. So I've been here in Spain. Wow, that's I nice. I recently changed out the ribbons. Um, the bag is from Mango. Where did you get them? This is a gift from a really close friend. Oh. And I think the brand is a zinnia, but I'm not sure. It's beautiful. Is there a dress code in university? No, not there is for exams and for a couple of official events, but for general day to day life, there isn't. So you can wear whatever you'd like. Can you wear jeans? Yeah, yeah. So you can go to lectures in jeans or even whatever. Red jeans. Yeah. yeah, you can express yourself however you'd like. Um, that's, in that's a lecture nice. or a class. Really, yeah. time changed because I'm sure many centuries ago uh, you wouldn't dare wear ripped jeans in a lecture. Yeah, this is, this <laughs> is of course, they wore no jeans yeah, at the time, yeah. but I'm yes. sure there was a very strict dress code 
I actually don't know the history, but I can imagine that there, there could have been a dress code in the past. Um, yeah. Um, um, so, no, I mean, I wouldn't usually wear something like this on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd wear something, probably jeans and a t-shirt in more dull colours day-to-day. Oh, that's very interesting to know because I really expected, like, to wear Oh, for general university life? Yeah, yeah. I would say not so, but then there were quite a few, like, black tie or more formal events, in which case there is a dress code for dinners and things. But day-to-day -day life, you'll see people walking around wearing jeans and sports kit and, yeah. and what these special occasions would be are like dinners is it uh... so there are subject dinners with tutors or like dinners where you're um you when you first start and yeah those tend to be and what do you wear there like, um, um, dress. Not there's not usually a colour um, requirement, but it will be like black tie dress code, so you can interpret that theme as you'd like. Yeah. Thank you so much. No. Hi, so I'm Ross, and just uh, graduating from my detail doctorate. Yeah, environmental yeah, yeah. engineering. <laughs> what is it that I'm wearing? So I think that clothes shouldn't be gendered and I think that where I want to wear clothes that I like and obviously trying to squeeze that into the conforms of the strict met things which I'm not going to give my opinions of. Um, so we've got a little, little ribbon that I bought and I bought about three exciting and a shirt so I've uh, slightly taken it in just because I don't like taking them in and then a pair of pants and some boots that <laughs> you may or may not like so yeah um, so yeah <laughs> oh got some little twigs <laughs> yeah absolutely so okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. And, Thank you. Um, what is your uh, normal daily uh, outfit? So my normal, to be honest, jeans, slacks, anything comfortable, and then it's just nice, nice to dress up and wear something that I like. And some so sometimes, sometimes it's like most of my clothes come from the charity shop. So, and getting to rummage through all the typically women's stuff is way more exciting than going through the guys' stuff. So, jumpers that are all the same, but they get better, like, it's better colors, better fits, more interesting. Why not? Why do we need to have clothes that, that are restricted? And I, I want to wear stuff that I feel nice in, that feels fun. And, uh, yeah, so lots of colors, lots of different things. Uh, I still agree with you, Ross. I'm still with you. Thank you for appreciating what I'm wearing, and it's nice because I had to fight a little bit. But anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cool. As graduation, academic dress is worn very often in Oxford, although no longer as an element of everyday dress. Every undergraduate and graduate must obtain a gown, cap, and a white bow, tie or black tie or black ribbon for the purpose of the university matriculation ceremony where students formally become members of the university. Regulations regarding gown differ from college to college, but gowns are commonly worn to formal hall, formal dinner, which occurs as frequently as every night in some colleges and as rarely as once a term in others, or not at all. Major public lectures, chapel, college collections, internal examinations at the start of term, head of houses collections and of term academic progress reports, college matriculation. Subfask comes from the Latin for of a dark, dusky color and refers to the clothes worn with full academic dress in Oxford. Their origins stem from their formal day dress worn in the past that has, to a certain extent, fossilized around the Edwardian period into what it is now and has changed only slightly since to accommodate modern trends and needs. As of October 2012, the University of Oxford's regulations on subfask have no reference to sex, meaning students of either sex can wear what is historically prescribed as male or female clothing. 
or under the letter of the regulations even a combination, although this is informally discouraged. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please comment below in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and remember, remember to subscribe to my channel to know more about fashion. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.